I was born and bred here in Bristol, and I really have a love for, for our town. I'm very proud to live here. It's a beautiful, beautiful area to live. Uh, we have water. We're surrounded on three sides by water. And I was so impressed by what the foundation did for me, you know, and putting me back together like Humpty Dumpty, you know, uh, that I knew when I was done with my radiation and chemo that I wanted to somehow volunteer and help them out. When we drove around Bristol and searched for a place to have the Garden of Hope, I knew this was really important. It was her legacy. She looked at me and she said, Walter, um, she said, I want the garden here. And I said, really, Laurie? I said, it, it's surrounded by a parking lot. And she said, no, this is perfect. She said, because I'm going to be right near it for the rest of my of eternity. And right next door to us is the cemetery of, uh, in Bristol. And my eyes filled up with tears. And uh, I said, absolutely, let's do it. When we knew the timing wasn't working, I, uh, I remember you know, sitting down with Laurie and holding her hand and saying, Laurie, I promise your park will be done. And I said it will be done as soon as possible. Um, and it was, you know, it was thanks to AIS. You know, uh, that was really a pivotal um, um, transition to make this happen. I don't know if we would have been able to do it without it. the Garden of Hope project uh, through Walter Burke. Um, one of our students had previously had a studio project which analyzed the um, Bristol Community Center um, and they knew that there were several projects that students could get involved with in the future. To see her dream um, come to fruition was um, pretty awesome. It's, it's something she wanted and um, desperately, and uh, she didn't get to see the end result, but oh, I think she's up there because she can see it, but from the time she talked about it, you know, she was just so full of wanting to get this you know, finished and have it a place where survivors could come and they could sit and they could have yoga classes here and, you know, all that type of thing. You know, it's, it's something. And then be able to come over here and just sit. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a place to sit and reflect. It's a great place to remember those that have passed, but it's more of a tranquil place to just sit and come to. And the concept of the project actually really relates with the breast cancer ribbon. The pathway itself is a ribbon um, and it's pink and with lots of sea glass and seashells and different Rhode Island um, specimens that were incorporated into it. And it's centered around the pink dogwood tree that was donated for Lori. I think people will know after the Hope Garden is put in who Gloria Gemmer is and what they can do and how they can help. And I'm hoping that 
you know, that they'll do me honor by not letting that die out. I've only started something. And it's up to everybody else to make that into what it's supposed to be and to make it bigger. I was just used as the catalyst for it all. So it's up to, it's up to everybody. And the more people that we help, you know, the more people who live longer lives. And hopefully they'll have a cure for this down the road too. But it starts off with people caring about another person.